Welcome to the video. In this video, I want to talk about this product here. Now, for those of you that are eagle-eyed, you'll know that this is something that we've had our mitts on since back in April. Now back in April we did a couple of videos around the TBS Vendetta. One of those was a setup video where we used this controller and it piqued an awful lot of interest and I need to say a very big thank you to Team Black Sheep and Trappy over there who sent us one of these as one of the first kind of test production runs before it was released as a product. Now it's just been released about three days ago so now we're in a state where the firmware is kind of in the final version for initial release, uh, version 1.0 03 is the firmware that's needed. This little guy came with version 1.0 of the firmware, so it literally was the very, very first edition. And I want to talk a little bit about it, because looking at the forums, there's an awful lot of confusion about what this is and why TBS has come out with it. Now, a lot of the detail we'll cover is on their website already, and we'll reference that a little bit, but it's probably worthwhile me talking a little bit about how this came about, because I had the same reaction as an awful lot of people on the forums, which was, why the heck a Team Black Sheep making a controller? So the reason that this exists was TBS is looking to create ready-to-fly models so that not only do you get the model itself, but you also get a transmitter as well. And they initially didn't want to design their own, but ended up creating this as a bit of an in-house project. And the idea was they were going to ship them with the Atom and also with a Vendetta as well. And they started taking them to events and uh, lots of people that saw this thing really loved it and wanted to get their hands on it so they've ended up selling it as a separate product but because of that it is a little bit confusing about what this is and why you would buy it over a more traditional setup now this is pretty large if i kind of bring in a tyrannus there's our trusted tyrannus that we use all the time you can see that actually this guy is a pretty big transmitter and that is a bit of a surprise because when you look at it in the videos it looks an awful lot smaller because it's kind of laid out almost like a PlayStation or a 360 Xbox One style video game controller and there are lots of products about to come out that have that same kind of format where it's not designed for those of us that learn to fly on more traditional radios it's more for the generation that are more used to holding things like video game controllers and there are a couple of cute things that you'll have spotted straight away. The first is that the screen in the middle not only acts as the screen to go through all the setups, but also is an FPV viewer. So this is a radio control, but it also has all the FPV reception electronics in here as well. Under here is a little 5dB antenna, and the range on this thing is pretty huge. It's almost 180 degrees, so so long as you're flying in front of you, you will be able to see it. And that 5dB gives you really nice reception. But for those pilots that are going to be flying, are you really going to use this little screen? Before we get on to that, and I'll talk about our experiences with it, you can see we've not even taken the tape off, so that probably gives you a clue as to what the answer is going to be to that question. Let's talk about some of the pieces on here. Now, these are actually the trims for the individual sticks. Uh, this is mode two, so it's a standard throttle. You can probably hear, if I put that by the mic, the throttle has a ratchet on it, but I'm sure if I pop the back off, we can sort that out. These are the trims for the throttle, rudder, elevator and aileron. We have the buttons to navigate the menus as well as the up scan down buttons to control all of the FPV bits too. The power button is here at the bottom. You press to power it on and then also under here we have an output for the TBS port that will provide 12 volts out and also a video out signal for goggles and we have a USB connection for doing things like flashing it with firmware. A DSC connection here as well and the other thing you'll spot on the back is that it is a module style transmitter so that by default there's no transmitter circuitry in here you plug in the module that you want now because we use an awful lot of FR Sky kit here that's the module that we ended up popping in the back so that we could fly our other models with it too and it has worked brilliantly the other thing we'll talk about then is the uh, the switches on this thing. There are a couple of uh, spring-loaded sliders at the top, and then there are a couple of two-position switches and a couple of three-position switches as well. 
Now the thing that surprised us when we first got it here is that this isn't a full featured radio, but it's not designed to be. In here there are no dual rates, there's no trims, there's no advanced sophisticated setup options. So if you are a new pilot and you're looking at something like the Tyrannus and the 27 odd videos that are on the video channel here confuse the heck out of you and all you want to do is fly, then this is a much simpler option. It's designed to be easy to set up for things like clean flight, beta flight, the DJI NASA V2 is directly supported, open pilot, Tau Labs, Blade, things like the Tiny Whoop, all that stuff is available through here. And with a very limited set of setup bits and pieces, you can very quickly get running. So there's three or four settings for the different modules in your back. You plug the module in, you select it in the menus, then you select the kind of uh, controller that you're interested in setting up and then you are pretty much good to go once you've bound your receiver to whatever module that you're using here. So my experience this when I first got it was pretty good. I did try to fly FPV with the inbuilt screen, but that's really not what it's all about. The inbuilt screen is there so you can navigate the very simplistic menus that are on this thing, uh, but also if you turn it on while holding the scan button, then it fires up without turning on all of the radio transmitter pieces. So it's just an FPV viewer. So if you're at an event and you want to watch what FPV streams are around and watch the racing, then that's the kind of great thing that you can do with it. The other thing as well is that because of the simplistic menus that are in here, the setup is really straightforward. There's only a handful of things. So if I turn this thing on, there we go, TBS Tango. This is version 1.0. I'm just about to upgrade it to the release version. If I go into the menu, then we only have a very simplistic menu in here. We can select the kind of drone that we have. Um, we can have up to 15 models in here. At the moment, I've only got the Vendetta set up. Uh, we have the remote. And again, we can pick what kind of radio transmitter that we have in here. And then the other thing that we have is you can pick on the display, the brightness, and other pieces too. Let me just show you very quickly what you can do. If you go into drone and add a new model, then you can give it a name, and you can also select the different type. So this, by setting this up, all of the defaults are set automatically, channel order and everything else for the defaults in that version of the software, which makes it really, really straightforward and easy to set up. So now we've done that, let's talk a little bit about what this actually isn't. This isn't designed for those pilots like me who love and have grown up with more traditional radio systems and already have FPV goggles and all those bits and pieces. If you already have that and you love it and you have it set up and it's working, then this will feel like a compromise. However, if you are a pilot that's coming in that doesn't want all that complexity, hasn't made all that investment already, and you want to buy something that's just going to work, this is a really cute way of doing it because what it provides you with is a radio that feels very much like a game controller. It provides you with a great screen to set everything up. Also allows you on this thing to access stuff like the Vendetta's remotely configurable FPV electronics. All that stuff is available through here. You can also, if you're at a race event, turn it on just for the FPV bit so you can sit in the stands and have a look through. It's a full 40 channel receiver. The video out here means that if you wanted to, by buying something like the very cheap and cheerful quantum goggles without a receiver, all you need to do is get hold of one of the TBS cables, plug it in the TBS port at the back, and then you can sit there with a £20 set of goggles and you have a really cute FPV setup. So I hope that explains a little bit about this remote control for those of you that have seen it on the TBS pages and wondering what it exactly is. It's a little bit bigger than you think. It combines a radio system that's been designed to be as simple as easy to set up as humanly possible with a high-end, very sensitive actually, 40-channel FPV receiver that you could use to also power some dumb goggles as well. If you're trying to look at this and think, is it a replacement for a more sophisticated radio and goggle setup? It's absolutely not. If we remember what Trappy was talking about, about how this product came into existence, this is really designed to work with those kind of quads where it's a ready to fly solution, where everything is here out of the box and it's easy to set up and configure. 
this is still a device that I use and fly with. It's still bound to my Vendetta and I still use it to fly the Vendetta, but I don't use the FPV pieces in here. I still use traditional goggles because that's what I'm comfortable with. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.